So let's now take a look at binomial probability. So what does binomial mean? Well, it's when you have um, different experiments that are all identical. So in other words, it could be sales calls. And you think about one sales call, it's kind of the same as the next sales call, the next sales call, and so on. You also have two possible outcomes, and you think of one as a success and one as a failure. It doesn't matter what you consider success, what you consider failure. Obviously, it's a sales call, then a sale would be success, and the failure would be uh, no sale in that case. The probability of success will always be denoted as P, which is the probability. And the probability of failure, then, as you should know, is nothing more than the complement of success. And so if it's 30% chance of success, the complement of that is 70%, which is then the failure. And the trials are independent, which means that whatever happens on the first trial does not affect what's going to happen on the second trial. So let's take a look at an example here. Oh, just a couple last little things here. Um, our interest is in the number of successes occurring. And what this means is, based on past history, if I was to look at five sales calls, what's the probability of being successful on two out of five of those? And so based on past history. The formula for coming up with that is a little bit um, involved, but it's not very difficult um, to come up with as long as you understand some of the different things on here. If you... Uh, do not remember what a factorial is, uh, n factorial. Again, that should go back to chapter four. Do we uh, talk about counting rules? And uh, you should be able to see that uh, in there. That's nothing more than if I had, you, as you can see down here. So if you had a three factorial, that's equal to three times two times one. If that was 11, then it would be 11 times 10 times nine times eight times seven times, uh, and so on down all the way to one. So this formula, again, is a little bit, it's, it's, it looks a lot more difficult than it actually is, but what you're doing is you're coming up with the successes and the failures, okay? And so what you're really trying to come up with is how many different possible combinations of successes and how many possible combinations of failures. Okay, let's look at an example here. I think it's always easier to figure out exactly what we're doing by looking at an example. And in this case, we're looking at Evans Electronics, and they say that 10% of their hourly employees will turn over in one given year, which basically just means that 10% of their hourly employees will leave in that first year. So in this case, a success. I'm going to look at the whiteboard to make these determinations for us here. And failure are based on leaving is success and staying is a failure. Now, why is leaving a success. Well, that's just because we're looking at 10%. If I was looking at 90% staying uh, as a success, then that's how it is. But we're looking at the 10%. And based on that 10%, if I was to randomly choose three individuals, what's the probability of one of them leaving the company? Now, I want you to think about that. We have three individuals. So here we go. We're going to draw our nice little people here. Here's one, here's two, and there's three. So there's our three individuals. N, in this case, equals three. What's the probability of one of those individuals leaving? Well, the probability of this one leaving and the other two staying is one possible path, right? Also, it could be where that person stays person leaves, and that person stays. And then lastly, it could be that one and two stay, and the third one leaves. 
How many possible outcomes is that? It's three different, I'm sorry, how many possible different paths to get to one person leaving is there? It is three different ones. So there are three possible combinations of one person leaving, two people staying. So let's remember that. So our sample size is three. And in this case, the number of possible combinations of one leaving, two staying is three. Another way to look at that is this is uh, how you come up with combinations. You take N and then you take X, like N minus X. And I'll show you that here in our equation. You'll see that here. We just, we just actually covered that a little bit ago. There's your n, x, and there's your uh, n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial, which you see here. Actually, let's make this look a little bit cleaner. That there. So what is that? That would be 3 factorial over, and again, we're talking about one success, two failures. So that's one, and then two factorial here. So what does that equal? That's three times two times one over one times two times one equals three possible combinations. So that's, how, that's what that's referring to when you see the combinations. So this right here is number of combinations. Okay, so we now know how to come up with combinations. Now we need to understand how to calculate the path. So here's what I mean by path. If this person decides to stay, and this person decides to stay, and this person decides to leave, we're talking about that was a 0.9 probability, a 0.9 probability, and a 0.1 probability, which then would be 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.1, or 0 0.081. So the probability of staying, staying, then um, leaving is 0 0.081. We also have staying, leaving, staying, and guess what? It's also 0 0.081. And then you have the same thing for the other combination. So probability of success, only going to happen once. Probability of failure, it's going to happen twice. And the number of combinations of this happening is a total of three. Now, I'm making a big deal out of this because, again, that formula is quite intimidating when you look at it, but really all it's referring to, let's draw it out as simple as possible here. What does that refer to? That refers to the number of combinations, and that you see here you have three of them. Then you're going to multiply it by successes. Success then is the probability of success to the x power. Okay, so what's the x power? The x power is basically the number of times. So 0.1 to the first power because x is only equal to 1, x being the number of successes. Multiply that by then 1 minus p, which is our failures. And how many times do we fail? It's our sample size minus the number of times we succeed. And so here's our failures. What is this? This is 0.9 times 0.9, right? Or 0.9 to the second power. This is nothing more than 0.1 because it only happens once. And the number of combinations, 1, 2, 3, is 3. So in this case, we have 0.3 times 0.1 times 0.9 to the second power, which is also the same as 0 0.081 plus 0 0.081 plus 0 0.081.
take a look at this in terms of a tree diagram, which maybe will make it a little bit easier to understand. But again, here's your three different paths. You add up all possible combinations of one success, two failures, and it's 24.3%, similar to what I did up on the board. Look at this in terms of a tree. Here's your person that leaves and then stays and stays. Here's your leaves, stays, stays. Here's your person that stays, then a person, second person leaves, and the third person stays, and then stays, stays, and leaves. So three different possible ways to get to one person leaving, two people staying, or one success and two failures. Okay, again, you only have one of these. That's why it's 0.1 to the first power. 0.9 to the second power because there's two of these and there are three different combinations which is why we multiplied by three. Now I showed you all of that. It is a lot easier to do in Excel. I highly recommend you using Excel to do this and it's binom dist is the formula. So go into Excel and put in these values. You'll see that you've got A2 refers to your probability of success, A1 refers to your number of trials or your sample size, and then A5 refers to your number of successes. You put those three values in and you will get this as your uh, probability binomial probability distribution. And in the end, all four of these should equal 100%. And so that's binomial distribution using Excel. You can also do it for cumulative, which is where you set this to true. And all that means is it takes the first one plus the second one. So this 97.2 is actually 0.729 plus 243, which, just go back here, these two numbers combined. is the cumulative of that would be that 0.972. And then you add the third one into that, it's 999, and then the last one making it 100%. Your last one will always be 100%. There's also some tables that are, should be in the back of your book or in your ebook, and you can look at those as well. Again, my recommendation is to go and use Excel to do this. I think it makes your life a lot easier because then you don't have to worry about an exact probability. Your tables only go by uh, increments of 0 0.05, and it's not as easy to do. So I highly recommend using Excel, again, to do binomial distribution. Also, you want to know how to do it exact step by step. Go into the homework manager, see the guided examples, and it'll make it a lot easier for you. Lastly, you can come up with an expected value for uh, your binomial distribution as well as a variance and standard deviation. And as you see, it's actually quite easy to do. You just take your sample size and multiply it by your probability. So in this case, your sample size is 3, your probability of success being 0.1. There's out of 3 employees, there's a 0.3% or 0.3 should leave. Your variance is then just 3 times 0.1 times 0.9, which is 0.27. Take the square root of that and your standard deviation then is 0.52. So that's how you come up with your expected and uh, variance and standard deviation for binomial. So with that, I know binomial can be difficult to understand. Understand just the probabilities is the most important part. I know I showed you how to do things up on the whiteboard here, but that was mainly to try to give you the idea and the concept of it. You're looking at an individual path, leave, then stay, then stay. Uh, stay, then leave, then leave, uh, then stay, and so on, and it gives you a little bit of an idea. Homework manager should hopefully reinforce that. The book should also be able to do that for you as well. So go on there and take a look at those. Hopefully this at least exposes you to discrete probabilities and binomial distribution.